my name is Aaron F. Ross and in this series of video tutorials we're going to be looking at product visualization in 3ds Max and Arnold. 3ds Max is really the optimal choice for product visualization for three reasons. First it has excellent support for CAD or computer-aided design formats. Second the 3ds Max interface is intuitive and easy to use. And third 3ds Max is bundled with Arnold a physically based renderer which is renowned for its power and flexibility. So let's get started in 3ds Max. I want to begin by just simplifying the interface a little bit since we're going to be focusing on rendering and materials. I'm going to hide some of the panels that we won't be using. First I'll hide the ribbon up here on the main toolbar. Over here on the left we have a few panels we won't be using. We've got the viewport layout tabs. Let's hide that. Right click on the textured bar at the top and hide the viewport layout tabs. Likewise with the scene explorer. We will be using the scene explorer but we'll be using that later in a floating window. Right click and hide the scene explorer as well. Also the time slider down here we won't be using that so I'll right click on its textured bar. Hide the time slider. At the top of the screen on the right of the main toolbar we see the projects toolbar. and That's where we can create or assign a project folder structure. I've currently got it assigned to the default documents 3ds Max. I want to point this to the existing project folder I've created and to do that I can click on the set active project button and you'll do that if you're using the exercise files provided with these videos. If you don't have the exercise files then you will want to create a new default project folder. Alright so I'll click on set active project. I've saved my project folder on the desktop so I'll just navigate for that go to desktop and I've got a folder called product viz. Choose select folder. Okay now our project is set up properly. I also want to set my units and grid size. So we'll go into the customize menu to unit setup and set that to metric with centimeters. Click OK. To set the grid size right click on the snap button on the main toolbar. In the grid and snap settings dialog go to home grid Set the grid spacing to one centimeter and we'll set the perspective view grid extent to 15 centimeters. And then we can close that dialog. Now we're ready to import our CAD document. Let's do that. We'll go to the file menu and choose import, import. We're taken directly to the current project's import folder. And we've got a step file in here. This model was created in Fusion 360 by Gabriel Corbett of TigerIndustrial.com and we saved it out to a step file for compatibility with 3ds Max. So select hamradio.step and click open. In the import settings, very importantly up at the top, we don't want to convert to a polygon mesh. One of the great advantages of 3ds Max is its ability to preserve the solid or parametric nature of a CAD model. We don't want to convert to polygons at this stage. We want to preserve the parametric model. That will give us the ability to change the tessellation or meshing settings later on in our production process. Change convert to mesh to off. Down here we want to leave the up axis as Z up because that is the 3ds Max convention. We do want to change the hierarchy mode. By default the CAD file is going to be organized into groups. We want to change this to use layers. Now the objects in the CAD file will be organized into 3ds Max display layers. That will make it a lot easier for us to select things in the viewports. With those settings click import. And then at the bottom of the 3ds Max interface we see converting using ATF which is Autodesk Translation Framework. That'll take just a moment. Once that's finished we see that we have a ham radio in the viewport and all the objects are currently selected. I can go around and select individual objects. Go to the modify panel just to show you that these are all of the type body object. A body object preserves the parametric or solid model characteristics of the CAD document and we have the ability to change the tessellation. Down here we see viewport display settings it's set to medium and in rendering approximation it's set to production. And These are good values. We can actually leave these as they are. We won't need to change these. 
but in some cases you might want to go in here and tweak the rendering settings so that the tessellation at render time will be cleaner and you won't get jagged edges on any of your models. But as I said, for this model, the default settings are going to work fine. All right, with our CAD model imported, we're ready to progress to scene layout. In the next movie, we'll look at organizing the scene objects.